Hey everyone, so a couple of days ago I made a post asking how many of you would be interested if I did a Q&A. And judging by the fact that there were over 700 comments on that post, I took that as a sign that a lot of you wanted this. So today I'm going to be answering a load of your questions like, what was the most embarrassing moment of my bass career? How many hours a day do I practice? And whether I'm going to do another battle with Davey 504. So let's get right into it. My first ever Q&A video. How much practice do you do technique work slash scales versus songs? Okay, well that's changed a lot actually. Back when I was in my peak practicing mode, I was doing about eight hours per day. I was taking it really seriously and I knew that I wanted to be a solo bassist. Most of what I was doing back then was pretty technique focused. Now 95% of my practice is just for the next YouTube video that I'm gonna make. My English is the worst, but how long have you been playing instruments? Well, first of all, your English is better than my any other language, so. I've been playing piano for 21 years, and I've been playing bass for 16 years. How it felt when you became so famous through Davey 504, and now you're one of the most popular bassists on YouTube. It was definitely a very surreal experience. It was really nice to see that all of my hard work had started paying off. It was also really stressful because I hadn't really made very many YouTube videos for a while. So I started working like crazy to put out, you know, two videos a week and that was really stressful and a lot of hard work at first but I think it was definitely worth it. What are some of the biggest obstacles you've had to overcome to get to where you are now? When I first started out, I would play basically any show that I could just to try and build up a fan base. You know, I would play bars, restaurants, colleges, uh, clubs, basically whatever I could, whether or not it paid. I did a lot of street performing too, because actually that would often end up getting me more fans than you know playing the bars and stuff like that. But this could be really hard sometimes because it's a very long process that often feels like you're not actually really getting anywhere. I remember there were some nights where I'd get home from a gig at, you know, 2 a.m. having just played to next to no one, getting paid pretty much nothing. And part of me would really question whether I'd made a huge mistake by deciding to pursue music rather than something safer. But in the end, my love for music and bass has always been stronger than my fear of failure. And that's what gets me through those hard times. In your opinion, who do you think the most technically and musically skilled bassist of all time is? Well, that's a really tough question. And people are obviously really skilled in different areas. But if I had to pick one, I would probably go with Victor Wooten just because his slap, I feel, is pretty unparalleled. There's a video of him playing Sinister Minister live with the Flecto. It was at some small club, you know, back in like 90. That slap solo is probably the most ridiculous slap solo I've ever seen from any bassist. Any collab planned with Nathan Navarro? Please, the bass world needs it. All right, leave a comment if you want me to do a collab or battle with Nathan Navarro. What is the best moment, in your opinion, you've ever had the pleasure to experience regarding your music career? The first one was when I played a show at this place called Capital Center for the Arts. It's about a 1300 seat theater, and it was one of the biggest gigs that I'd played up to that point. Because it was such a big gig for me, I'd been really nervous leading up until that point. They only gave me one song in a load of other acts, so I was really feeling a lot of pressure. I went out there and it was a sold out crowd, all 1300 seats were packed, and I played a pretty epic piccolo bass solo, you know, probably one of my best up until that point. And while I was playing, I was getting all of these cheers and claps from the crowd, they were being really supportive. And then at the end, I got a standing ovation. And that was just a really nice moment because it was easily the biggest gig I'd played up until that point. And it went so well and it just gave me so much confidence. How are things going with your fiance slash wife? That proposal video was fun. That was fun. How are things going? <laughs> things are good. <laughs> nice. What is the most embarrassing moment you've had in your bass career? You know, there's been tons of gigs where I've made some pretty horrific mistakes and it just sounds terrible. There was one show I played where there were probably about a thousand people in the audience. You know, they really hyped me up and had this big intro that they had planned out. So now, put your hands together for Charles Bear 2. Everyone's clapping, you know, can't wait to see what I'm gonna do. And then of course, my mic isn't working. Play my bass, there's no sound coming out. So I was just kind of standing awkwardly on stage for about five minutes while a thousand people were just sitting there waiting. Do you play video games? If yes, what are your favorites? I love games like Mario Kart, Super Smash Brothers, Zelda, Halo. I'm pretty sure I could beat any of you in Super Smash Bros if I play as Captain Falcon. And Mario Kart, well, 
Let's just say I get the jump on Koopa Troopa Beach every time. Would you base battle with Davy504 again? <laughs> I think he wants to wait until his hair has grown back before he does another battle with me. But yeah, I would be up for that. What bands have you been in? I've been in a lot of different bands. When I was in school, I was in a pretty like hard rock, verging on metal band called Bloodshot Summer. And then when I was at Berkeley, I was in another kind of hard rock band called The Resemblance. And then a Celtic bluegrass band called Cat in the Moon. I played with a pop artist called Skylar a lot. And before COVID, I was playing in a band called Soul that was an Afro-Celtic funk band. Any collab or projects planned with Ichika Nito? I would really like to do another proper collab with Ichika. It seems like he's really focused on doing his own thing right now. I'm not seeing him doing a lot of collabs with other people, but I really love the one that we did together. I think our styles work really well together. And so yeah, I'd love to do another one with him. If you could put together a dream band, who would your bandmates be and what genre of music would you play? That's tough. I'm probably gonna end up having about 10 members here. On the guitar, I would have Ichika, um, John Petrucci, <laughs> James Hetfield, just because it's fun. And maybe like Jimi Hendrix, so you know. Four guitarists, that's what everyone, that's what every band needs. On drums, it would probably be Dave Weckl. We've got to have at least three or four bassists, so, you know, assuming I would also be playing bass in the band, I would get Victor in there, probably Jacko to play some crazy fretless stuff, and Marcus Miller to lay down some funky slap. Do you prefer to play bass with your eyes closed? They're closed often, which is ballsy and talented. It's not a conscious choice, it's not something, you know, I decide, all right, now I'm gonna close my eyes here because that's gonna look really passionate. <laughs> no, it's, it's just something that happens, you know, when I'm hitting a really nice bend or something like that. Do you feel getting involved more in YouTube has helped or hindered your growth into the musician you wanted to be? That's a deep one, that's a deep question. I would say overall it's helped because on YouTube, the possibilities are endless, especially because I'm producing my own music. So I can have a song that's got, you know, bass, drums, strings, piano, guitar, pretty much any instrument I want. That's something that's much harder to do live. I'd have to have about 20 musicians on stage. The one thing that can be difficult about YouTube sometimes is that it feels like every video I release needs to have some kind of groundbreaking or catchy, interesting idea. If I just release an original that has no theme, you know, like a weird tuning, then the problem is that it doesn't get as many clicks because it's not as catchy, it's not as clickbaity. That means that YouTube stops showing it to as many people, including the people who are actually subscribed to my channel. And that can be a little bit frustrating because I know a lot of you wanna just see straight up original music with no frills, no strings attached. A book about learning tapping written by you would be awesome. Well, you're in luck because I do have a book about learning tapping written by me. I'm gonna leave a link in the description. All right, well, thank you guys so much for all your questions. Let me know in the comments if you have any more questions or things you want to see in future videos and I'll see you guys in the next video.